It's a privilege to meet a number of you. I live in this community, as many of you know. I live less than a couple of miles from here. <laughs> and uh, uh, I live over on Dutch Settlement between Day Road and Miller Road. But I'm not a Miller because of Miller Road or Miller Lake. Although I tell people that, so I get special privileges, you know. <laughs> uh, my wife and I uh, moved there, and we, we bought our place in 86, and we moved there in 97. I've been associate pastor of a church in, uh, a Berean Baptist church in Portage for several years, and I've taught uh, Bible there for a number of other years, and I am now the age of Pastor John, so I decided to, that people didn't want to listen to me any longer. <laughs> um, we, Alice and I have been married 61 years, so we thank the Lord for his faithfulness to us. We have five children scattered all over the country, and uh, all of them know the Lord. And that's, that doesn't say that they don't have a problem once in a while. So does their dad. <laughs> We, we thank the Lord for his grace daily. It's a privilege to open the word of God this morning. <clears throat> and although we don't have a lot of time, I want to spend some time in Colossians, if you will, please. If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians, we're going to do a brief Bible study about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the greatest New Testament passage. In fact, it's the most complete New Testament passage about the person and work of Christ in the word. It's, uh, <clears throat> we won't do all the chapter, but the church at Colossae was suffering with a lot of problems. People were coming in with false teaching, especially worship of angels and all kinds of things, and especially denying that Jesus Christ was deity, that he was God. I believe in the Trinity. You do too. I believe that Jesus Christ is truly God and truly man. In today's world, not very many overall in the world believe that. One of the great differences in today's religions and the systems is that we have a Lord Jesus Christ who is God and who is risen. And that's a wonderful thing to think about. Every other religion, as you've often heard it said, has a dead leader, yep. a dead founder. We have a living Christ who lives and reigns above. Let's look in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. I want you just to remember three things about Christ this morning. He is the Lord creator. If you don't believe in creation, you'll have a hard time with salvation. Because every time you see the reference to salvation in Christ in the New Testament, you're going to find it references his eternal ability to create. God spoke and it was. He didn't need man's system. He didn't need a natural system to do it. He spoke and it, and it was. And that's wonderful to remember. Keep that in mind. Because one of these days, he will speak and put an end to some of the mess we see in the world. By the word of his power, he will destroy the enemies that come down upon the people of God. And it's great to see. It says, <clears throat> he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. If you're puzzled about what I'm reading from, I'm reading from the New King James. So you won't be lost. <laughs> and remember that language changes a little bit through the years. And when, when I read from the King James and I taught from the King James, I usually had a Webster's 1820 dictionary by my side. And I'd say to people, this means this. So you understand. So some of this is so that we'll understand what God is saying to us. He has delivered us. So Christ is not only the creator, he is the deliverer. In other words, summing it all up, he is the savior 
of mankind. And he is the creator of all that we see. And eventually, he will be the king over all in the end, in the end of it all. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. How much do you hear about sin today? Usually people talk about sickness. They talk about mental illness. They talk about weakness. They talk about upbringing. They talk about having very little in life, and so poverty must bring this on. Sin has always been in the heart of man. Isaiah said from the sole of his feet to the top of his head, <laughs> sin has to be dealt with. Because sin is against God. Sin is overstepping the line. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is an attitude of un disloyalty and unfaithfulness to God. And all of us, every one of us, was born in sin. And, in, and uh, the scripture says, all have sinned. So it needed, we needed a Savior who was capable of dealing with our sin. That meant he had to have one hand on the Father, so to speak, and one hand on man to bring them together and to create a situation where man could be forgiven and have a standing before God. The world today does not have a moral standard typically. There are a lot of people, even in this community, and I won't name names, but uh, they're in this community, who, who simply do not believe that, that man needs a savior. They look inside themselves, and they keep talking about uh, how their faith, how much faith they have, and so on. And you look around for what that faith is grounded in, and what do you find? It's not grounded in much. I get, I get uh, upset when I hear so much discussion, even on the media today, about faith, his faith, his faith. I ask the question, what, I what is it involved in? Where is it grounded? What's it about? If you have faith, you have to have s some object, do you not? You have to have some reason to believe that. We have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, faith in his word. Our faith is grounded in the scriptures, the living word of God. And our faith is founded in Christ, who, who is the expression, the very expression of God the Father. Uh, <clears throat> he is the, it says in 15, he is the image of the invisible God. That doesn't mean he's a statue, <laughs> It doesn't mean he's just a body uh, reflecting who God is. He is actually the representation, the actual image of God. And God has been pleased, place in his son, the responsibility of the message going out to man. God's message goes through Christ to man. And if you've seen the son, you've seen the father. Isn't that what the scriptures tell us? And if you hear the Son, you've heard what God wants to say. And what God wants to say is revealed in his word. And people, people today are looking for revelations. They're looking for special experiences. They're looking for some kind of voices springing from heaven. We have the written word of God and the living word of God in Christ. We don't really need. In fact, it's dangerous to add to the scriptures or take away from the scriptures. Some people, some of the, the, the situations today and some of the movements are so amazingly off, off track because they're not measured by the word of God. I believe in the deity of Christ. I believe in his saviorhood. I believe he created all things. And I'm saddened to tell you that in many of our schools, many of our homes, Evolution is more taught than creation. If you were, if you were a, 
uh, tempted sometime to want to believe a naturalistic answer to things, study it carefully. Study it very carefully. Don't rule God out of that wonderful thing where he made all things. The scriptures tell us <clears throat> he's the firstborn of all creation. That doesn't mean he was born as a, as a child is born. That's a, a statement in the original language of a position of authority. The Lord Jesus Christ is above all and before all. And so it's not that he's another person or another angel or something like that. One of the interesting things about some of the religions of the day, including Jehovah Witnesses, they, they rewrite this passage. And they teach that Jesus was born, that he, that he was a created being by God. No, he wasn't. He is God. And he is eternal. Six times they change the wording in this passage so that it reflects that Jesus was a child of God, not his beloved son. This says, <clears throat> the scriptures tell us here, for by him are all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. In other words, on this earth or in heaven or in hell, if you please. Anything in this life, or beyond it. He, he created it all. All things were created through him and for him. So he's, he's preeminent. That's the, the message of this passage. He's above everything. The Lord Jesus Christ merits our worship and our praise. I think one of the sad things of the day is that many people think about Jesus as just the earthly part of his life. And they, they like the miracle or they like the, the special things that he brings to the life, but they don't like to understand that he was, always was and always is and always will be. As the scriptures say, Jesus Christ, the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. So we have a, a, a Lord Jesus that's not just a, a human, do-good kind of person who did nice things when he was here on the earth, he, he was a miracle-working Christ. It proves it through the scriptures, through the things he did. And we can rejoice that we have that kind of Savior. Jesus' Jesus' name should often, frankly, be called the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who just constantly repeat the name Jesus like a magic formula, if they're not careful, they'll lose out on the fullness of his being and his power. He is God. He's to be respected. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who's the head of this church? Jesus Christ. That's something we all ought to remember. All deacons should remember that. All people in the pew should remember that. The goal of the church is to do the Lord Jesus' will, his, des his desires in their life. And when that reigns, then you don't have the problems like First John wrote about where somebody loved to have the preeminence. The diatrophies of the day and John's day were a real problem in the church. And he reminds them that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Now this means that under, under him, is leadership which he appoints, which he blesses, and which he gives light to, and guides them in their decisions. But it behooves all of us to say, what would the Lord Jesus Christ have to say about this situation? Where can I fit into his will and do his precious will? So the Lord Jesus is a creator. The Lord Jesus is a savior. And the Lord Jesus is head of the church. That way you can remember this passage. I don't know how anybody looks around us in this kind of community and this kind of weather and this kind of beautiful season and can't believe that God made it all. It's just incredibly mind-boggling to think about the intricacies of man, how man is made and how everything around us is made and God 
made it. I, uh, I guess I show my prejudice, but I believe in the creator who spoke it into existence. And I'm not so sure that's a prejudice. It's probably a conviction. <laughs> because it, to me, it's so important to think of Christ above, uh, just above man, if you please, just above the average, above the, the kind of common language that we use. He is Lord indeed. Now, he's not king yet in a sense. One of these days he will reign, but that day is yet to come. Till then, where is he? He's in heaven, the right hand of the Father, and he's interested in you, and he's interceding for you. And any moment of the, this week, you can come to him in prayer, and he will hear you. Isn't that great to think about? The risen Lord. So, folks, it's good to concentrate on a passage like this on a communion Sunday and think about how much the Lord loved us, and cared for us, died for us, and lives now for us. Let's bow in prayer. As we close the message this morning, I won't prolong this, but I'd like to ask, is there anyone here who especially needs prayer today? And I don't know you by name, but the Lord sees you. And you have a special need in your life, and you'd like to be remembered in prayer. Yes. Anyone else? Heavenly Father, you know the needs of hearts, and you know the, the special need of this one who's called upon you, and we thank you for your, that you care. We pray you would strengthen us all for this week and help us to serve you faithfully. We pray especially for this church as it goes through this time of knowing the will of the Lord, and we pray that your will will be done for your glory. In Christ's name, amen.